Francis is busy right now. Okay, who is speaking then? This is Joel. Oh, Joel, thank you. Welcome. Nice, nice really? to meet you. I was very happy to come. Maybe Francis will be ready soon, but I is not ready now. Excellent. <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, did we meet before? When I saw your picture, I recognized you. You look familiar to me as well, but I do not know. What is your name? My name is Max. Obviously, we didn't meet in this life, but maybe in the past life. I just had the recognition when I saw your face. Uh -huh. Perhaps we did meet before, but I would have to know what your name was. <laughs> All right. I... Oh, actually, yes. Um, one of my incarnations was... Uh... Ah, no, it's a different time period. I was in India with, in the Gandhi time, but it's you. I don't think you were there. I don't think you were there at that time. I you, you were there before that. Okay. So I don't know what 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 was my incarnation uh, in your time. It's like late nineteenth century. I don't know. Oh, okay. So well, um, perhaps if you recognize my face, then perhaps we were friends or at least acquaintances at that time, or my right. face might have appeared in some document or newspaper print. Uh-huh. Uh, did you, uh, are you connected to Osip Mandelstam? Uh, is, incarnationally, is, is, is Osip Mandelstam uh, part of you by any chance? She is connected no, Osip, to- Osip, Osip, Osip is, is it's, it's a male. I can connect to this this name and energy, yes? You mean now or then? Uh, Osip Mandelstam uh, lived uh, in Russia, uh, born in around 19, uh, uh, 1870 and died around, around uh, 1988, I, I think. In my lifetime, I was not connected to this name. But I can be connected to this name now. I see, I see. Because I feel the similar vibrations between you and him, so I, I wonder what it is. Oh yes, we, we share many great similarities, yes. Uh-huh, nice. So what's your connection to um, Kutkumi? Ah, uh, a great man. I am very... in inspired by him, yes. Uh -huh. I, are, you work, are you working with him now? Yes, of course. We have been staying in spirit for a purpose to help things work well in the physical. So that we are working together to bring information separately and together to the earth uh-huh. Uh-huh. And um, are you still with Theosophic Society? Are you, are you overseeing the Theosophic Society? Say that again. Are you still overseeing the workings of the Theosophic Society? Ah, in some senses, yes. We bring them information. Um... um the correct is it the correct wording sometimes for their thought process sometimes eludes them and we can help them a little bit. Uh-huh. And but, what's your focus? Oh, go ahead. But we are here. It is no accident that you called for me because we were waiting for you to do so. Excellent. The information that comes is no accident to the earth. Nice. Yeah, I, I was happy to see your face. I just browsed something else and your face just popped up and it was wonderful. This it was an instant recognition. And no accident. Yes. <laughs> and I clicked on that. It was uh, very nice to see that you are related to, uh, to uh, Blavatsky and Kutkumi. Yes. 
very so how, what yes. was your role with blavatsky what did you do i was a teacher for her i i she would come to me occasionally to ask some deeper questions or to get confirmations about her own thought processes in this life in this life that she lived and so i would help her to um mold her thought processes about who she was and what mission that she would undertake as she moved forward and became a teacher of teachers uh-huh uh-huh and um what's your role now what do you do i am here to i am here to help with communication to the earth and could and many of our associates are here to do the same are you connected with the aliens they are part of our network yes are you in touch with uh, takur and grindel i know who they are yes i don't always speak to them directly but i know who they are uh huh and what's your relation with yogananda ah very close relation with yogananda because he is a good friend uh huh uh huh and baba ji and baba ji we all stick together because we have very much likenesses and um name karali baba of course <laughs> all right and satya baba have uh, this community without all those names that you have uh, mentioned and what's your specialization how do you specialize what's your in, uh, input of course that i will have input of a very similar nature to everyone else we have agreements to do and say certain things to the earth at certain times so therefore we have come together and decide when is the right time and what is the right thing to say and brings harmonious um synchronicities to your peoples excellent uh so recently i came across of uh, messages that maybe ascension is coming very soon like in next month or so month or two do you do have you know, any insight yes, on that i do have something to say about that you the thing is about ascension people must be ready for it they are not ready yet for it it's not that i am being negative but they have not, they have to align with it they have to be a part of it and shine with it and flow with it if they do not have this flow within them of the ascension then it will not happen it cannot happen it is not that i do not want it to happen i would wish nothing more than to have it happen as quickly as possible however not that many people are aligned to it their missions have been pulled out of alignment with third dimensional worries and threats and fears and so therefore they must put their faith above their fears and and this is how they will bring a more alignment to it but it cannot come as fast because there are not as much alignment to it it is not something that will zap you with uh that when you're not prepared for it it is something you will grow into like hand me down clothes it will be comfortable when you reach it uh huh i see but maybe it's maybe i mean the information about the ascension wave coming was uh received through multiple uh hypnotic yes listen carefully there is much deception in that because regression so it is a 
there is much deception about when it is coming. Soon mm -hmm. is a relative term, and soon for some of these people may be a hundred years because of the, the different contacts that they are channeling. <coughs> Remember I this. See. I see. Mm -hmm. They are saying soon, 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 but they are not giving a date or time because they cannot. They do not know when the earth will come into alignment with this ascension energy because there is a certain energy that must be received or reached in order for people to have this ascension experience. And so far I can see that there are some people that are ready for it, but there is much, many people that are not. And you must be an example to those around you so that you are bringing them into alignment. But there are many that are distracted and not doing their missions properly. And so they are using the ascension as an excuse not to do what they are supposed to do. Oh, it's coming right now, so I don't have to do anything. But they must <laughs> continue to do what they are meant to do so that it can come to everyone sooner. Excellent. So, yeah. Uh, deceived. Do not be deceived by this. Excellent. Actually, I remember now the name of the person. It was uh, a hypnot quantum hypnotist or quantum hypnotic regressionist. Alicia Cole, and I think she's wonderful. Her energy is excellent. Yes. So I invite you to connect to her and uh, and uh, maybe help her too, because I think she's uh, one of the brightest uh, people around uh, on, very, on YouTube. But those that come through her are ancient souls and have many, many beautiful and wonderful messages. However, soon to them can be a hundred years. Uh, no, no, she is not a channeler. Uh, she is regressing other people, and other people uh, speak for their higher selves, and that's where information comes from. But yes, the word soon is, is coming, and she tries just to decipher that word, and that's where from the confusion yes, the is The word coming. soon is the, the key element in this particular uh, um, scenario because soon is not uh, soon to God is how long a million years I don't know God only knows what soon is to him but the word soon is too vast it takes too much space they have to narrow it down to what they mean by soon right they also describe these higher selves describe uh, the wave of ascension very physically as a wave of light, which is has rainbow qualities, and it moves around the globe, and it kind of approaches slowly, and people can see it coming. Can Do you comment you on that? The, they, they will say, they say that people will see it coming. Uh, people would see how the wave is coming as a cloud from the horizon. It will be that way. They will be able to see it coming in some senses in their psyche. They will not physically see it. They will mentally see it. But mm -hmm. the thing is, they have to be prepared to be able to see it. If their eyes are not opened far enough, if they are not prepared enough, no, it will not be seen. And you think it's still uh, not very soon, not months from now? I must tell you, I must tell you, I believe it is not as soon as you think because people are not ready. Look around you. Look around you. Are people ready for this ascension? They are not. I wish they were, but they are not. And I do not mean to be negative. I only wish love and peace upon the earth and upon all things. But you must be doing your mission. You must be moving forward. You must be, be being the example. You must be loving all people unconditionally. These are the 
these are the conditions for the ascension to be fully engaged. And I do not see that so much on your planet quite yet. Uh huh. That sounds familiar, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately. Anyway, uh, I wanted to ask you also about sex. So now the spring uh, vibration is around and the ideas of sex are in the air and, uh, and on my mind too. And um, as I get older, I'm trying to figure out what to do with it, how to perceive it. So there are two competing, there are two competing ideas. One is that the sex is, uh, is uh, separate from spirituality and another one, it is the same substance, same, same idea. So, so I wonder how to deal with it. It can be both. You, you decide, if you want your sexuality to be part of your spirit, it can be part of your spirit and spirituality and part of your unity with humanity in many ways. If you want to separate it, you may separate it, but it is not as meaningful if it is separated. But listen to me carefully. Sex is not a bad thing. Sex is not... Bad, no, you can't do that. But sex must be beautiful and must be something that two or more people have agreed to do together and in a thought that it is loving and good for connection. And it is not going to hurt anyone. And it is not, it's going to have a positive outcome. Now, have you, if you look at sex and in the way that third dimension looks at it, it's bad, bad, no, no. You can't do that, that's, you cannot do that. But you can do it with great spiritual connection, with great love for one another, with great wanting to be closer to someone in a, in a very intimate way, that you are not, that you want to experience them in a greater way, perhaps, because you respect them or because you need to feel uh, closer to them or whatever. But do not separate them and make it a, a negative thing. Bring it into a positive realm in every sense. So if you want to connect with someone sexually, you must be wholeheartedly wanting this and not being negative about it or thinking that it will be less, cause something less to happen or cause something negative to happen. But you must tell them, if we do this, this is for a positive reason. This is for bringing together a closeness to grow love in a different way. Perhaps you are not in love, but you want to experience a greater closeness a greater sense of humanity or a greater sense of connection. Now, if it will hurt someone, you must not do it. If, if it can hurt someone, you do not do it. It is not to hurt. It is only to edify and build up. You must understand that. So if there is a contract between you and someone else that you would be breaking, you must let them know that this is something, it, you must get permission to break it. And they may say, all right, you can do that, but they may not. And if they find out it would be painful for them to understand that you have broken their contract without permission. Do you understand? Uh -huh. I wanted also to think about, uh, to talk about uh, sex and violence. It seems to be that uh, sex and violence are made of the same substance, of the same spiritual substance. Is it so? I do not see violence as a spiritual thing. It does, it does not resonate with me as a person. As a spiritual being, I do not resonate with violence. But I resonate with sexuality. They do have similar energies in the sense that they can be 
uh, sex can be performed in a violent way, but I do not see it as a positive way in many senses, unless that is something that will bring you closer together. But in violence, I see only, uh, I see negativity. That negativity is more connected to that than sexuality. Sexuality can be connected to negativity as well. However, I would prefer to separate sexuality from the negative portions that it can have. I'm, I'm listening to Terence McKenna, and he brought to our attention a great idea, which is, was surprising to me, that humanity evolved uh, from being a prey to being also a predator. And uh, we were hunters for millions of years, or maybe oh, yes. close to millions. Our ancestors were hunters for maybe a million of years or so. And that is part of our... Uh, Makeup, of course it is, and especially I was surprised. But I was thinking that a scientific profession is is very um, is very mild and very how do you say non-violent, non non-predatory. But he describes that the just the mere capacity of logic is a property of a predator. Logic and ability to collapse the uncertainty into certainty. It is, a, you know, it is exactly what mathematicians do and and uh, experimentalists do. Take an uncertain thing and come up to a certain rule or a certain answer. So investigation seems to be of the same nature as predatory activity. So, so now kind of uh, coming back to acceptance of my uh, aggressive nature, that is confusing. Can you comment on that? Yes, you have gravity that can also be negative or positive. You have many things that can be good and bad. Say you can blame gravity for when you drop the egg, it will fall on the ground and smash. But you can also say gravity is very positive because it keeps you grounded on the earth. Now, is it good or bad? You have many things that you can a find on your planet that can be put into good and bad perspectives. But yet, you will choose to put them in whatever you judge them to be. So, take your judgment of what a predator is and bring it into a positive aspect. You can be a predator finding the answers to many questions that may help and save the world. But you can also be a predator looking to destroy the world in other ways as well and finding things that can uh, be negative. So you must understand it is your perspective and watch how you want to deal with these different uh, uh, things that will make them what they are. You may have a predator attitude, or you may have uh, the attitude that your aggression is built up within you, but do you have to use it in a negative way? You do not always have to use aggression negatively. Sure, you may find that in sexuality that a little aggression can be actually amusing and fun, and and positive absolutely but it it's not that you are being extremely painful with it unless that is something that makes you happy with each other but to have aggression and be frisky and and energetic is not a bad thing but you must take the perspectives that are positive about even the most uh, basic things. Of course, at one time, you were a predator. You must have, you were a runner from the very beginning. Runners outran their prey because you have uh, sweat glands and all these things. Animals do not. And after a while, 
they cannot, they cannot run as long as a human can, and they will collapse. And that's how the first hunters hunted. Wow. Wow, interesting. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Great runners, and you have a, a better system for sweating and exhaust and breathing than any animal with great fur. And so oh, wow. they outran their prey until they exhausted them. Oh, wow. Uh, I, uh, I wanted also to use uh, the, le the leftover of the time to speak to the creators of the um, uh, Stonehenge. Uh, before you go, do you have any other announcements or any other... Um, how do you say, uh, blessings which you would like to record? Blessings. Uh-huh. It would be most appropriate to do blessings, yes. Yes, uh-huh. One moment, please. All right. May God's light always shine on you and be present with you at every moment, even in those times when you are in the greatest of darkness. Let his light shine through to you so that you may not be in fear or confusion, but in great understanding that his hand is right there upon you. And as his hand is right there upon you, it is able for you to be led out of the darkness and into a great light. Most people use their light only when it is deemed necessary, but use your light every day because your light is what gets you to the goal that you are to be reaching. And many times people do not reach their goals because they lose track of the light. And if, you, if so, if you lose track of the light, turn around and face the other direction until you find the light that you are looking for Find it before you move, before, before you take any major decisions. You must be in the light. Ah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a good advice. Thank you. I think that's all I wanted to ask for today. Um, I invite um, uh, maybe if uh, creators of Stonehenge could, could speak. Very good. It was a very good joy to speak to you today. Likewise. There was, I have lived several lifetimes after my life here as Joal, and those huh? accents have come through as well. But that is okay, because I am of many dimensions and many uh, perceptions. So, much love to you, and keep Much in love. mind that things are relative. And the word soon is a very relative word that may mean a million years to God, but it also may mean uh, 10 or 20 years to others. Uh -huh. But I love who you are. I love that you are questioning many things, and that is a beautiful and beautiful thing. Thank you. Keep your mind open, and I will bring you the originators of Stonehenge. Thank you. Mm.